Lucina Barnes' powerful debut monsoon magic tells her riches to rags tale of growing up in Manila, an incredible story with its roots firmly planted in reality The 2nd of June 2018 Cina Barnes' first book is a painful and, at times, joyful memoir of her childhood. Monsoon Mansion by Sinel Barnes Little A4 Fifth Stars Monsoon Mansion begins in 1980s Manila when the author, her aristocratic mestiza a mother, stepbrother and self-made father are living a lavish life in a 10-room, pearl and marble palace, with a ballroom. But the glory days don't last in this stately home. The Gulf War heralds the end for her father, who has made his fortune in oil and recruitment. Hong Kong raised Filipinos on their struggle for identity Sinel Barnes remembers it, however, as the end of our family. With their money running out, her parents convert the home into an events venue, but then a storm washes away all hope. Looters took whatever of our belongings had floated through the gates. When her defeated father leaves and her flighty mother replaces him with a gold-digging, abusive reprobate who allows gangsters and cockfighting into the mansion, things go from bad to worse, and dangerous. The man takes up with a guerrilla group in a bid to gain a political platform, all the while leaning on Barnes' mother. This is a riches to rags memoir that holds your attention with its poetry, and will hopefully not be the last we hear from this accomplished writer. War on Peace by Ronan Farrow W. W. Norton in this timely book, which grew out of the journalist of the moment's experiences as a U.S. State Department rookie recruit, the still only 30-year-old Farrow argues that Donald Trump's administration is merely taking to a new extreme a trend that stretches back to September 11th, and even before, to former U.S. President Bill Clinton's domestic reinvestment pledge. At, at the core of Chinese growth, argues financial journalist with less diplomatic spending, fewer ambassadors, a Pentagon that towers over other agencies in terms of power and prestige, and a White House filled with former generals, the U.S. no longer has a capacity for professional international relations, he argues. This opens the way for a China whose coffers are more flush with each passing year. Farrow interviews every living former U.S. Secretary of State, including John Kerry, who warns of Beijing, reaping the benefits of the U.S. stepping back. Others include Henry Kissinger, Hillary Clinton and Rex Tillerson. Farrow has had remarkable press access, and he's made the most of it.